Hello YouTube, it is Jacob Zacks for Dark Gadgets, and this is the new MacBook three months later. When Apple introduced the new MacBook, many people were skeptical that a laptop with only one port and a seemingly underpowered processor would work for the everyday person. Now, over three months have gone by, and it's time to see if the MacBook lives up to Apple's claims of it being the laptop of the future. The design of the MacBook is more of an evolution than a revolution because it looks more like a next generation MacBook Air than a completely new computer. The MacBook is the thinnest laptop Apple has ever made. In order for the computer to get this thin, Apple had to invent a new keyboard and trackpad. Many people were quick to dismiss this keyboard and say that it wasn't very good or easy to type on, but I actually disagree. I really like this keyboard. I don't know if it's the tactile feedback I get from pressing on the keys or the fact that the individual keys are bigger, but for some reason I actually really like to type on this keyboard. The trackpad was also redesigned for this MacBook. This trackpad has a technology called force touch in it that means that it can sense how much force you're applying at any given time. This actually adds some functionality to the OS, but I don't find myself using the extra features that much. One thing I do like is the haptic feedback I get from a clip. Even though the trackpad isn't moving, it still feels like it is. This is one more tiny detail that makes this laptop a joy to use. The MacBook is the first Apple notebook to come in the same space gray, silver, and gold that the iPhones do. Each has its own specific charm, but I chose silver for the classic Apple look. Using a single USB-C port is actually a lot easier than people make it out to be. Everything is wireless nowadays, so I rarely find myself having to plug anything into this Mac. If you do need to plug something in, Apple sells adapters that can be used until more manufacturers adopt the USB-C standard. The Retina display is beautiful as always, but in 2015, it's almost expected for an Apple product to have one of these. However, I do applaud Apple for making this display more energy efficient compared to previous ones. The speakers on this laptop are probably the best that I've ever heard on a notebook, and that includes the 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. They are loud and clear with almost no distortion, even at full volume, and that's really impressive for a computer this size. Performance is the real area of debate. This MacBook has the mid-range 1.2GHz Intel Core M processor. Apple chose to use the Core M processors to create a completely silent computer that used absolutely no fans. A lot of people think that these processors aren't are really underpowered, and the truth is, they aren't. The benchmarks match the lower-end 2013 MacBook Air, which I had no problem using every day for multiple hours per day back when I owned one. I've seen a few complaints of slowdowns just using the computer lightly, but most of those complaints are actually caused by Yosemite, and these bugs will be fixed in El Capitan. As long as you aren't doing heavy video editing, this computer is perfectly fine for everyday tasks. So after using this computer for three months, I can comfortably say that this computer is worth it. The combination of amazing design with actually decent performance makes this a compelling choice when choosing a new laptop.